I want to leave you with this very informed position that Sadhguruji took on the hijab controversy. Listen in and please write to us what you think about this issue. Let me pick up, uh, you know, the current example of uh, the hijab controversy. Uh, in Karnataka begins uh, from a school, then it's not localized there. It just spreads, becomes a national issue in Supreme Court, in different courts. And, uh, and just look at the way the atmosphere is vitiated. People are saying hijab first, not kitab first. See, whether you wear a hijab or burqa or you wear a sari, or you wear a salwar kameez or a pyjama, what you wear, or you eat uh, khichdi or biryani, all of it comes from soil. So soil is a tremendously unifying force. Instead of looking at aspects of life which puts us all together, we are continuously looking at aspects which divides us. Soil is a universal thing. It doesn't matter who you are. What religion, what race, what nationality, what gender, or whatever else you think you are, you come from soil and go back to soil. So this can become a, a major unifying force. But uh, many people have stopped sending their daughters uh, uh, to schools. Uh, in school, uh, the issue is about uniformity. Where do you stand on this? In schools, should uh, children be uh, separated from each other in the manner they look? Or should there be a dress code that makes everybody look equal? Where do you stand? See, when, uh, when you're in school, that means you're still considered a child below 15 or 18 years of age, you're considered a child. When you're a child, you should not be fed with the poison of division. When you're a child, you must grow free of those things. It's very, very important. How you do it? For each culture, it's left to themselves. But it's extremely important. Children need not grow in the exact mold of the previous generation of people. Whatever prejudices, problems, hatreds, loves we have for each other, this need not be imposed upon children. It's very important. How you achieve it? Maybe different people have different ideas how to achieve it, but this is a must that next generation should not be limited by what we have been limited with, should not be enchained, enchained by what we have been chained with. It's very, very important that we do that for every generation. This is a fundamental responsibility of every parent, every adult, every teacher, that the children do not pick up the prejudices that you have lived with. But uh, parents uh, and, and children, this is not an equation only about parents and children. The whole national politics is involved in it. What do you do in a situation like this? Uh, that's not like that. There are vested groups, you said. They, they are definitely there. That may look like that because you live in a television studio, because you see those things all the time, those visuals. I walk on the street, I ride on the street, I don't see those visuals. Only when I turn on the TV, I see those visuals. I'm not saying they're not true. They're true, but they're not as big as they seem to be. So, so the fault is ours. I'm not saying that. It's your business to show what's happening there. I'm not saying it's a fault. That is the business of the news channel. You don't show an empty street peacefully, everybody is walking around. Where, what is the point of that? You show where the wound is, all right? There may be a little wound on my body, but uh, that is not the whole body. Uh, what do you, what do you uh, make of the argument uh, where people say, uh, Sikhs are allowed to wear turbans, you're wearing one. I don't know if you no, describe I didn't it as a term. Like this. Let me tell you my experience. When I was young, for some reason, the usual Hindu way of, you know, shaving your head at uh, some temple, that did not happen to me. By the time I was three and a half, I had such big curly head, all right? So for some reason, I never allow anybody to cut it. So when I… when they put me in a convent school, there they insisted that I must cut it. Then I said, I won't go to school. So they took me to another town. There also they insisted, I must cut. I said, I won't go to school. So I stayed out of school for months. But one day, I'm like four years of age or maybe four and a half at that time. In the afternoon, after you eat, you know, there is a nap time. When I fell asleep on the bench, they had cut my hair completely. 
against your wishes yes against the fundamental so right I, under the i refused to go to that school i got out of that school and i said i'll never again go back there but after that haircut became natural till i became 16 17 after that again i have not cut my hair <laughs> but now you're allowed not to, but should yes, uh, Article 25 and see 19 the, the, apply? See, that is, they're applying European rules on Indian children because today we have forgotten. In India, if you look back 50 years ago, most of the boys also had plaited hair. So they want to cut that and make us into English people, all right? So, unfortunately, it is so. Uh, because of that enforcement, today a whole lot of young men have everything shaved in their face because they want to look like English people, because that is the ideal way a man should look, not like this. They think this is a natural thing that happens to a man, but they think this is freaky, he's got a beard. No, that is freaky. You don't know why you're shaving yourself. People can give any explanations, but you don't know why, all right? So leave that, it's okay, but at the same time, it's very, very important in a given society, if we have to move forward, we have to constantly look at points that will unify us, not points that divide us. Soil is that aspect which puts all of us together. If you don't get it in this life, at least when you're buried, you understand the same worms eat you, all right <laughs>